They tell me, Patrick, this isn't right. We must indict this. All you do now is walk around and act self-righteous. Your last verse was worse than before. Why did you write it? I looked them in the eyes and I replied, because my life is like this. Crazy things come out of my mind. Every time that I'm rapping, I'm racing at the speed of light with every rewrite. But you're not prying. I'm fine. Thanks for checking. I'm just in a plasma state, like an average day. Even when I'm relaxing, I'm still getting curiosities at a velocity that would have other people second guessing. Like, hey, what if a prophet that was on us predicted that a comet would miss us by an ominous but obvious raw inch as a promise? Well, I guess that type of schism would be a mess that would impress the president if it was in his province or region. But it's not what our job is to worry all the time and be lawless. I'm more concerned with using what I've learned to earn spiritual profit because I'm a sick puppy with lyrics. My canines chew through syllables with no interference. People murmur about my talent, but when they encounter it, they flee from my prowess like witchcraft scaring Puritans. I'll blow the world's mind and at the same time security clearances. And I'll bet nobody has that on their resume for experience. Stop it, I'm blushing, thanks. <laughs> all right, first of all, most importantly, how's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> all right, that's what I wanna hear. So it's really funny what just happened because that's what happens with more frequency for the new me, the me you all see standing before you today. Quote unquote new me or present day me really likes rap music, but me a while back did not like rap music at all. In fact, old me was what you could call the antithesis to rap music. Old me was more of a, you know, staying at home, reading a book for fun kind of guy. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I still like that. But old me additionally had this mentality. You know, whenever rap music came on the radio, on a friend's playlist, whatever it was, old me thought that it was destined to be attached to a warning label, like, overexposure to this content may cause loss of brain cells, brain hemorrhages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm sure there are some people who have that perception as well about rap music. But here's the truth. Rap music is misunderstood. Now, I know how some people respond to what I just said. Oh, Patrick Ashman, that whippersnapper, he enjoys listening to music about drugs, violence, and scandal. That's the devil's music. Well, you got me. <laughs> I can't really respond to that because the truth is rap music does have the stigma and has been associated with a subculture that does make routine references to drugs, violence, and scandal. However, like anything in life, to only focus on a specific fraction of a whole is to miss out on the true essence. And in this case, it's to miss out on the true essence of an art form, because that's really what rap music is, a provocative, poetic, raw, and confident art form that allows for expression. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what I believe we all have in common with rap music. We are all powerful, capable individuals, and I can see it with every face in this room. We all have something special, and at least one good thing going for all of us. But we all share a common kryptonite. We are all misunderstood. Sometimes by ourselves, sometimes by other people, but mostly by ourselves. And this is often a result of us not taking enough care of our self-images. Now, what are our self-images? Well, they're the perceptions that we create of ourselves for others and us to see. And not taking enough care of those special dynamic things that represent who we are to the world and to ourselves can result in an increase in self-consciousness and as a result, a loss in opportunities or connections with people who are close to us in our everyday lives. But I know I see you guys all looking with glum faces out here, but that's where rap music comes in. As crazy as it sounds, I see rap music as something that has helped me to express myself. And I see it as a recipe that can embolden our self-images. And this recipe consists of three components. Self-promotion, number one. Expression, number two. And persuasion, number three. And I believe that if we use these three ingredients, we may be able to become more comfortable with ourselves, closer to other people around us, and overall closer to the final goal that we consider to be self-fulfillment with our self-images. So, ingredient number one, self-promotion. It sounds really self-explanatory, right? <clears throat> hey, everybody, look at me. But what I really want to emphasize here, though, is the amount of attention we give to ourselves. Because what exactly does that look like? We, as human beings, weren't exactly put on this earth with a magical unit of measurement to designate how much attention we give to ourselves. However, 
That's because it comes from a very abstract place, the human ego. And we all have human egos. And sometimes we need to learn how to perceive it the right way so that we can be confident without crossing the line or underselling ourselves. For example, let's think of it like this, guys. All of our human egos, imagine them to be college dorms, right? And each of our college dorms inside our heads has two roommates. Roommate number one is confidence. And everybody likes that guy, right? Everybody likes confidence. And then your second roommate is arrogance. And well, arrogance is the other roommate. We all have that other roommate in our lives, don't we? And the reason why some of us are so subconscious of self-promoting ourselves is because we think that people will see us as the other roommate. Arrogance. rut row. So that raises the question, where do we as human beings draw the line? Well, I like to think of arrogance as confidence that doesn't fact check itself. But confidence just capitalizes on the facts, what's already inside each of us, that we have to offer the world. For example, every day, you know, I'll, I'll be in a rap battle with my buddy Jacob or whatever. And Jacob might say to me, Patrick, yo, I got three Lamborghinis. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like, that's pretty, that's pretty good, man. I'm like, don't get too ahead of yourself there, Jacob. So I might respond to him with something like, oh, Jacob, you got three Lamborghinis? Aw, oh, that's really cute. But I got four more, plus I store Porsches in my clothes, like they're drawers to boot. And there's nothing wrong with what I just said, if it's mostly accurate. Because you remember, the goal of self-promotion, we don't have to tell these fictitious fantasies about our lives to gain attention. Sometimes people just care about what's already there. Also, another misconception I want to address is the idea that in order to self-promote, you know, it's automatically selfish. But in reality, the goal of this ingredient is to promote an individual and encourage them to put themselves out there for the world so that they can more easily access opportunities that benefit both themselves and people around them. And rap music, likewise, is misunderstood in this respect. A lot of rappers are portrayed by the media as valuing fame, fortune, and indulgence, which they do. But the reason why is that a lot of rappers come from a classic rags to riches story, living in bad neighborhoods, experiencing troubling circumstances. So when they finally rise to the occasion and gain access to amazing things they thought they would never have in their lives, they aren't afraid to show it off to the world because it's indicative of their opportunities that they took advantage of and those that they can continue to take advantage of in the future. And likewise, I don't think we should be afraid to show off what we have as well to the world because that's the key to unlocking opportunities around us. And once we begin self-promoting ourselves, our uncertainties will begin to fade and be replaced instead by these words. It's like a fun little personal motto. It goes like this. This is who I am and what I can do and I feel so cool with that. So can everybody repeat after me? This is who I am and what I can do. And I feel so cool with that. You know, I just wanted to make you guys sing, right? <laughs> OK. So second ingredient, we are talking about expression. Now, I think the big takeaway here, the important thing for all of us, is emotional sincerity, honesty with our emotions. I don't mean to share every single detail of our lives, like it was 7.30 in the morning and I poured my milk into my bowl before my cereal. No, everybody doesn't want to hear about those details, but people do want to hear about the honesty in our lives and the special emotional connections that bring us together. Now, to give a good example of this, I'm gonna start talking about Pablo Picasso. I know, Pablo's not a rapper, but Pablo, as you well know, is an amazing painter. And if there was one thing he was amazing at, it was profoundly expressing his emotions in raw and profound ways that downright shocked some people. Now, I'm talking about cubism, which I actually learned a lot my sophomore year in my humanities class from Mrs. Krabschak. Hi, Mrs. Krabschak. <laughs> and what's so interesting is that this art form consisted of incredibly just raw angles completely different colors that the art society had never seen before. People, it made art critics throw up in their mouths. They didn't know how to react to it. But the important part was that no matter how e each individual conveys their emotions, they do it in a way that's honest. And sometimes honesty isn't always pretty, but it's definitely what's real. And as crazy as it may sound, rappers in this respect aren't much different than Pablo Picasso, whether it's Kendrick Lamar, 
Nas, Kid Cudi, Mac Miller, or many others. Because whenever these rappers feel emotional turbulence, they don't just tell us, they actually show us, just like the author of a good book or Picasso. They might speed up the pitch at which they're rapping. They might raise or lower the volume of their voice, change their vocabulary. Whatever it is, they succeed at using physical means to establish an emotional connection with us, the audience. Because through emotional expression, we get emotional connection. And without that, us as human beings wouldn't always be able to relate to each other as good as we could otherwise. For example, one of Kendrick Lamar's very first albums entitled Good Kid, Mad City, which is very good, by the way, even if you only listen to the clean version. But even though the story he tells, Long and Winding, tells a ballad speaking of drugs, violence, gang affiliation, not everybody can relate to that. But a large amount of us can relate to the emotional power and the struggle that he went through. Passion, resentment, elation, because these are the things that make us human. And if we share these things more, we can achieve the same thing that rappers like Kendrick Lamar achieve, success and a closer emotional connection with our audience. Because rappers like Kendrick didn't get famous because they denied their emotions. They got there because they just embraced them as a part of who they are and what they stand for. And so once more, guys, I'd like to leave us all with the idea of emotional sincerity because the more honest we are with ourselves, the more real we allow ourselves to be. And the more real we allow ourselves to be, the closer we can become to our audiences. And I know I've started using the word audiences a little bit, but all I mean by our audiences, even though not all of us are rappers, obviously, but our audiences are the special groups of people in our lives, our friends, our teachers, our parents, our family, significant others, distant cousin, three times, five times removed, whoever it is, those are the people that we want to be closer to, and we can achieve that by being honest with our emotions. And now we reach our third ingredient, persuasion. So I know what somebody's thinking, but Patrick, you already mentioned self-promotion. I know, but I'm talking about persuasion. Self-promotion, let's think of it this way so that we all don't get confused. Self-promotion is the what of our lives, the subject matter, right? But persuasion, on the other hand, is the how. It's how we go about showing it to other people. A common example that I demonstrate this in my common everyday life is when driving to school, I'll be listening to rap music, of course. <laughs> and the thing is, is that, you know, I'm only partially tuned in to how the rapper is actually telling the story or what it's about specifically whether they're cruising through the city, partying, things that I would probably normally not do. And so I can't relate to that aspect, but it's about how the rapper is telling it, and that's how I get a sense for their authenticity as a human being. It's how I connect to them. For example, this person might even be able to make me consider the world differently and think, wow, this makes cruising through the city and partying seem so much more fun and staying at home to read a book. And that's because it's part of the element of swagger. I know, you probably didn't expect me to say swagger of all things, but here I am. <laughs> and swagger is like confidence, but it's infectious. It gets the listener on the rapper's team and creates a connection and emboldens them for everybody else. Because with the ingredient, the thing is with the ingredient of persuasion is that sometimes we need to hear from ourselves as human beings that we are special and powerful before we actually believe it. And just like that rapper, whoever it was that I was referring to, we are all the storytellers of our own daily lives. It's only partially about what our lives have been like, what they are like, and what they will be like. But the rest is about how we choose to portray it, because that is the part that we have in our control. Now what I'm not saying is, as soon as we start you know, attaining belief in ourselves, convincing ourselves, because that's the priority here. I'm not saying as soon as we start doing that, that you say to your audience, okay, bye, show's over. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. We still need to balance attention between our audience and ourselves so that we don't get too self-conscious, but we also don't get detached because connections with other people are really important and putting yourselves out there is how you achieve it. 
And uh, one more misconception is that you have to please other people. And there's a big mistake with that because first of all, it's impossible to please everybody. Another thing is that it takes a lot of energy. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'm lazy at the end of a long day, confession. <laughs> and there's a good quote by this amazing philosopher and scholar named Kanye West that I think really emphasizes this idea of pleasing other people. It goes like this, quote, people always say that you can't please everybody. I think that's a cop out. Why not attempt it? Because think of all the people you could please if you just tried. Okay, so no, Kanye is no philosopher, but he is a rapper and he didn't lose too many brain cells from rap music. So I'd like to modify his quote a little bit. And his new quote goes like this, quote, people always say that you can't convince everybody. I think that's a cop out. Why not attempt it? Because think of all the people you could convince if you just tried. Now, ultimately, guys, impressing people with our initiative and our flashiness is only a means to an end. The end goal is reaching comfort and security with our own self-images and putting ourselves out there for the world. Because ultimately, everybody, the biggest change comes the day, I believe, that we all put ourselves out there, become more comfortable with our self-images, and start telling our sto story full on, rather than holding details back. Because our audiences don't want to hear us as the storytellers, you know, once upon a time, little red riding hood walked through the floor. That's boring. <laughs> they want us to tell it in a way that's engaging, dynamic details. People want to know us, the real us. And if we put ourselves out there, we can be accepted and have an easier time accepting ourselves and creating connections. And ultimately, if we self-promote ourselves, express ourselves, persuade ourselves through a different mentality, philosophy, or an activity that helps you channel that mindset, mine is rap music, but you guys all might have a different one, then I believe that we will all be able to be more comfortable, close, attain closer connections with other people, and ultimately, that end of the road goal down the thorny path, the end of the road goal that is self-fulfillment, with our self-images might not seem scary as far away or daunting as it sometimes does seem. Thank you.